I was able to get, you know, some interviews. Unfortunately, I'd say about 80% of those were more the type that would open with, so did you know Bernie Madoff? At which point you kind of know the interview's over already. You know, I didn't really know Bernie per se, but I interacted with the sons quite a bit. In most regards, it was a great place to work. I felt like they looked out after you. If you had a personal situation, they're very understanding about it. When you found out about the Ponzi scheme, when the news broke, what was that like? Uh, I think utter shock is the only way you could possibly describe it. I mean, you've been with these people for eight years. You kind of drop your jaw, you put your coffee down. Some, I remember one person actually just literally dropped his cup of coffee and just spilled everywhere. Kind of the coldest shower you could possibly ever take, just in, a, in an instant. And I, I realized that there was a good chance that professionally I was in a really deep hole. Mr. Madoff, what would you say to all those people that lost money, Mr. Madoff? What would you say to them? Of course, at that time, proprietary trading desks were shutting down left and right. We were entering a recession. Major sectors of America's financial system are at risk of shutting down. It's uh, not the most favorable work environment. He said he always knew this day would come. Now Bernie Madoff is in jail. My conscience was always clear. It wasn't as though I had this tremendous amount of egg on my face and I felt as though I'd done wrong. Um, I think the toughest part for me was when it broke, my brother called and the first thing he said is, are you going to jail? And I, what are you talking about? Why would I go to jail? What did I, I haven't done anything. So this is the walk pretty much every day for uh, eight years, 10 minutes door to door. I was always expecting SEC or the FBI or one of the groups that came through the doors that day in December uh, to come ask questions. At first it was kind of exciting. I mean, you'd ride the elevator with the FBI agents, but that was the only interaction. I've looked at sort of regressive employment, if you will, going back to old types of jobs, stuff that I was very successful with. Phone just never rings again. You call them, they don't answer, leave a message. You call them again two days later. The business people like what I brought to the table, but the HR people took a look at it and said, you know, there's a lot of qualified candidates out there. Why would we take a risk on a guy who worked at Madoff? There were a lot of lifestyle things that I was doing. I sort of had to reevaluate. The dining room would overlook Brooklyn and Queens. The living room would overlook uh, Central Park in the West. And it was a pretty spectacular, awesome home. You reevaluate who you are, and you've got to be willing to completely reinvent yourself and sort of put your ego away in a pocket and just do what you've got to do. We were up on the 30th floor. Even though we faced on the south, we had a pretty clear line of shot right here in the Bernie Madoff's apartment. And in fact, I tried to get a couple pictures of him using a long telephoto lens, not to much avail. But back in the days right after the story broke, all of these blocks here were covered in news trucks with the satellite dishes sticking up. Hey, Bernie, give me one nice shot, buddy. Bernie, turn around, buddy. And I would have to come and go through that circus every day to get to the subway or get to a taxi to go someplace. Do you see yourself as a, a victim of the Madoff scandal? I, I don't like to think of myself as a victim, but I've certainly been greatly affected by it. Uh, you know, it affected my personal life. I think it had a lot to do with the disillusion of my marriage. Unfortunately, divorce litigation is expensive. I don't get to spend enough time with him, so when I do, it's pretty, pretty significant. Just, like I said, just to see him out of the blue like that, it doesn't make your day, it makes your whole week. Moved out of Manhattan, out to uh, Forest Hills, Queens. We live in a studio now, it doesn't have much of a view. Until I can get situated and start to rebuild myself back up, it's just going to have to do. You applied to a job at Starbucks? Yes. Tell me about that. They were not impressed with my resume, to say the least. Uh, they saw it, they asked about it, and the hiring manager laughed. Uh, no other way to put it. Have you ever been tempted to somehow remove it from your resume? Yeah, the problem is it's eight years. How do you... The, the question I ask myself is, would I rather be an honest person who worked for a crook, or would I rather be a liar who worked for a crook? when it comes out. And once, if you're a liar that worked for a crook, nobody's going to hire you. And if you're an honest person who worked for a crook, maybe you still have a chance.